Welcome to another video of Da Vinci Design and Engineering. This is the first video in a series of Dynamics in Bridges. In this video we will discuss the collapse of the first Tacoma Narrows Bridge. So this video discusses the reasoning behind the collapse in more detail. Let's begin. The Tacoma Narrows Bridge is a suspension bridge in Tacoma, Washington State, United States. However, the picture you are looking at right now doesn't exist anymore because this was the first Tacoma Narrows Bridge. The original Tacoma Narrows Bridge opened at the 1st of July in 1940. However, it collapsed at the 7th of November in 1940. How could that happen? Let's first take a look to the bridge itself. What was it like? The type of the bridge was a suspension bridge. This implies that the bridge deck is suspended by using vertical hangers, which are connected to the main cables. The main cables are connected to the pylons, those are the two towers you can see in the picture, and then connected to the huge weights to anchor the main cables. The picture at the top of your screen, you can see the geometry of the bridge. The main span between the two pylons has a length of 840 meters and the side spans have a length of 330 meters. In the middle, you can see a simplified version of the cross section of the bridge. The width of the bridge deck is 12 meters and is connected to plate girders with a height of 2.4 meters. This means that the slenderness of the bridge, which is defined as the length of the span over the width of the bridge deck, equals 1. Uh, related to 72. This is very slender. All the suspension bridges of that time, like the George Washington Bridge, has a slenderness ratio of 1 related to 33, and the very famous Golden Bridge had a slenderness ratio of 1 related to 47. Also, the very limited height of the plate girders is remarkable, resulting in a slenderness of 1 related to 350. Later on in this video, we will see that those limited dimensions played an important role in the collapse of the bridge. At the left, you can see Sir Clark Eldridge, the designer of the bridge. His original design contains trusses as main girders, which would be much better by the way, but we will come later to that. The design costs based on that design were 11 million US dollars. Leon Mosai was hired to assess the design of Eldridge. He made a decision to change the main trusses into plate girders. The design costs reduced to 6 million US dollars. During the building phase and after the opening of the bridge on the 1st of July in 1940, the bridge experienced vertical waves. The bridge deck vibrated, even with small wind speeds. This was not the case for the other aforementioned suspension bridges, like the Golden Gate Bridge. To prevent excessive vertical waves, some measurements were taken. The girders were anchored to the rigid bedrock at both sides of the bridge. The second measurement was using inclined hangers between the bridge deck and the main cables. And last, dampers in the form of hydraulic dampers were applied. At the 7th of November 1940, at 10 a.m., wind speeds were measured of 67 km an hour. The bridge deck experienced a vertical vibration with a frequency of 0.2 Hz. The connection of a vertical hanger failed. Afterwards, the vertical vibration turned into a torsional twisting mode. Both half main spans were twisting in anti phase. Due to distortion mode, multiple connections collapsed due to fatigue. Compared with a paperclip, if you twist it enough, it will break. The sequence of these events e leads to the collapse, happened at half past 10 in the morning at the same day. Why could the amplitude of the waves of the bridge deck grow to such values? 7.5 meters, leading to the collapse of the bridge. 
There are three theories. The first one is random turbulence. This implies that the frequency of the wind pressure coincides with the eigenfrequency of the bridge, leading to resonance, which amplifies the motion of the bridge. You can see that in this graph. On the x-axis, the relative frequency, defined as the forcing frequency over the eigenfrequency. On the y-axis, the amplification factor with respect to the static case is expressed. Simply said, if at the onset of resonance the relative frequency is equal to 1, and without damping, or zero damping, which implies a damping ratio of zero, the magnification factor would be infinite, which will obviously lead to collapse of the bridge. However, the bridge had some damping, so the magnification factor would be in the range of 1 to 5. The scenario of random turbulence is very unlikely, since the wind has a range of frequencies, so not only just one on the x-axis. Only at very small moments, the motion would be amplified a lot. Another theory is vortex shattering. An animation of a vortex is presented in the top figure. These are vortices occurring in the case, in this case, close to the main girders, as depicted in the bottom figure. This leads to an under pressure at the top at the left of the deck, and also to an under pressure at the bottom at the right of the bridge deck, which would rotate the deck and hence amplify its motion. Also, this theory is unlikely, since the vortices occurred at a frequency of 1 Hz, while the torsional eigenfrequency of the bridge equals 0.2 Hz. The last important theory is aerodynamic instability. At the top of your screen you see the simplified bridge deck subjected to the wind under a certain angle. Hence the bridge deck wants to rotate. You can see that in the middle. At the bottom the bridge deck wants to rotate back but is amplified due to the wind again. Due to the rotations more and more energy is built up inside the bridge deck and in essence this is negative damping. The motion is enlarged due to its own motion. Hence the term aerodynamic instability. So what can we learn from this collapse? We can learn a few lessons, of course. Before building a complex bridge like this one, or a slender one, an aerodynamic analysis is required. It's better to have a more expensive but safe design than a cheap and an unsafe design. And the new Tacoma Narrows Bridge, as well as other modern suspension bridges, have a much higher torsional stiffness. This increases the threshold velocity when aerodynamic instability occurs. You can see that, i.g., due to the large girders with a height of 7.5 meters, which were applied in the new Tacoma Narrows Bridge. Compare this with the original height of just 2.4 meters. The girders are also open in the new Tacoma Narrows Bridge, allowing the wind easy to pass. So I hope uh, you like this video, and if you do, uh, please uh, give a thumb up and let me know what you did like about this video, and if not, give a thumb down and let me know what I could improve further. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next time. I'm looking forward to it.